Hi, my name is Jake Nisley, and I'm the Principal Percussionist of the San Francisco Symphony. Today, I'm going to talk to you about my general overview for playing and practicing hand cymbals. I'd like to start without any cymbals in my hands and just give you a big overview of how I physically approach playing the cymbals. So, the first thing I do is I spread my legs about shoulder width, and then I offset them, for me, with my left in front of my right. So my weight is distributed differently. Next, I'm going to practice putting my hands up as if I had the cymbals in my hand, which in this case I'm going to do with my right hand over my left hand. To adjust the basic benchmark angle at which we will be playing the cymbals, I try to think of it as about 45 degree angle to the floor. So it's not parallel, it's not perpendicular, it's about halfway in between. After that, I would take the cymbals and offset them ever so slightly so my right hand is inside of my left hand, or slightly lower than my left hand. Finally, I want to focus the motion of my arms all in one plane, so I'm not moving laterally and I'm not moving in and out. I want it to be as much as possible straight up and down. Now, the ratio at which I move the two arms is not 50-50. In fact, I let gravity do the majority of the work for my top hand, and I'm actually using the force of my left arm to push the left symbol into the top symbol. In terms of a ratio, I would say the right hand or the top hand is doing maybe one third, 33% of the work, and the bottom hand is doing two thirds of the work, or 67% of the work. As these two crash into each other, I practice just like this in a mirror as much as possible, so I can see that my left hand is in fact doing approximately two-thirds of the work, that my right hand is basically allowing gravity to do the majority of the work for it, and then I'm practicing as much as possible keeping this all in one plane, one axis here. So that way, for my benchmark crash, I have an elimination of as many variables as possible. Now, we will talk about later different angles, different speeds, different types of crashes. First, let me just pick up the cymbals and demonstrate everything that I just showed you. So for starters, I'm going to pick up the cymbals. I like to pick them up in between my index finger and my thumb, right here near the bell of the cymbal. Next, I'm going to put my feet, you know, about shoulder width. I'm going to offset them with my right behind my left. I'm going to bring the cymbals up to about 45 degrees. I'm going to quietly, if I can, as quiet as possible, place the two cymbals together. This time, I want them as flush on with one another as they can possibly be before I will offset them slightly. So now the right is a little bit lower than the left. The reasoning behind doing that with the symbols is because I don't want them to be exactly on top of one another to eliminate what we call air pockets or the trapping of air inside the symbols when they come to meet one another, which would sound <laughs> like that, which is a sound we're trying to avoid for the majority of the time. So, as I have them placed together, shifted slightly apart, then my general crash with my left hand doing the majority of the work will be something like this. Now you can see I'm not trying to force the cymbals together to get the sound out, nor am I letting the cymbals sort of dangle on top of one another and create a fuzzier sound. I'm, I'm basically trying to let the cymbals do what they're going to do on their own and put as much energy into putting them together as I'm going to put in to pulling them apart. So we have a basic fundamental, as I like to call, benchmark crash to work with. I hope that this gives you a great overview of some general cymbal playing and I look forward to next time.